Hey there guys, I am the Six Machine and welcome back to another Warhammer video. So we have now had the final day of Warhammer Fest with loads of new stuff previewed for 40k, Age of Sigma, as well as some of the board games like Underworlds and Necromunda. But today was the big secret reveal and there was a lot of chatter about what it could be. Was it heresy? Was it Battlefleet Gothic? No, unfortunately as cool as either of those would have been, we didn't get any of that. What we did get, however, is arguably, and for me anyway, even more exciting. A brand spanking new edition of Age of Sigmar is coming. Yep, AOS 3rd edition is well and truly on its way, and it looks like it's going to be an absolute corker. Now I've never had an Age of Sigmar army, I started a couple of small ones, but didn't really have anyone to play with. Cue sad noises, I know, I know but I am really, really hyped to get into it properly in 3rd edition and hopefully get some of my friends to, to build up a small little army so that we can get some games in and maybe even record some for the Heralds of Hobby channel as well. My army, as I'm sure many of you will know or have guessed, will of course be the undead forces of Nagash, so the new Soul Blight stuff has really, really caught my eye, but I honestly cannot wait to get my hands on this new edition and see what rules have changed and what new lore and units we are going to get for all the factions because I think it's fair to say that pretty much across the board all of the Age of Sigma factions that GW have either reimagined or introduced brand new ones of they, they just blow it out the park every single time with the quality and the design and the look of the models and I would actually go as far to say as I think in general the look of the Age of Sigma stuff is usually better than what we see with 40k I mean, you may disagree with that, but I think in general, when I look at the Age of Sigma models and units, they just look so much more intricately and well designed. It could be because they're for the most part newer than a lot of the older 40k stuff, but I just, I love seeing Age of Sigma armies. They always just look so fantastically unique and diverse and cool. As you can see on your screens at the moment, we got some really nice pieces of artwork and also not only the map of the area this edition is going to, at least at the start, be focused on, which is the realm of Gur, the old Law of Beasts, I believe, for you Warhammer Fantasy players, and goes alongside with some of the big new destruction beasts which have come along with the newly awakened Kragnos, which we saw on Monday. But we also got to see what is the front cover of the Age of Sigma 3rd edition rulebook, and you can see that on your screen now, which is really fantastic and really well designed and really well done. I'm a big, big fan of the art direction that Games Workshop in general have uh, tended towards in the last year or so. As I've said many times, all of the 9th edition codexes just blow me away with the quality of the art, and this is doing exactly the same thing for Age of Sigma. One of the things I really love about Age of Sigma lore is that unlike quite often in 40k, and they've begun to change it a bit now, but for the past sort of like 25-30 years in 40k, it tends to stay relatively stagnant over time, the overall generic sort of two minutes to midnight, end of the world kind of thing, end of the galaxy kind of thing, does tend to be the overarching end game that sits there, never quite being reached, but always being looming on the horizon. Age of Sigma really does have a moving, progressive, evolving lore that follows and continues across the editions. So I'm really eager to see how things have changed now that Kragnos has awoken, and what may be in store for factions like Death as more and more new units and creatures come to the forefront of the wars across the realms, and maybe even what Nagash can do with some of them as they eventually die. They also showed off a few very, very awesome models, starting with an absolutely unbelievably cool new warrior of Sigma, Indrasta the Celestial Spear. She's described as someone almost equal to the Lord Celestant that we have seen in previous AOS lore, and a character who specialises in hunting down and killing the most terrifying beasts in the mortal realms. So she sounds like she's going to be a good fit for a fight against some of the enormous beasts that will surely be coming along with Kragnos. I think the model is fantastic both as an Age of Sigmar hero, but also as a potential conversion opportunity for a lot of players. I think a lot of Slanesh players may be looking at this as a potential demon princess conversion that you could sort of evil up and make her look a bit more corrupted uh, and menacing. And I am also sure that more than a few Blood Angels players are eyeing up a potential Sanguinius conversion based on her, especially as she already has that sword and spear like the Forge Worlds 30k version of the model also has. 
We also got to see some of the new, and I hate to say it, but I've seen people saying it on Twitter or whatever, quote unquote, Primaris Stormcast. Now I'm saying that in jest, I have seen these Stormcast Vindicators side by side, and you can see a picture on your screen now of them alongside the older version of the Stormcast. And to be honest, I think they look really good. They're a bit leaner and the armor is a bit better fitting, but in my opinion, they aren't a huge departure from the current Sigmarine models you might already have. And they will absolutely 100% fit in with any Stormcast force that you sort of already have painted and ready for battle. And I personally love this slightly slimmer aesthetic. I think the new design of the armor looks much, much more interesting and, and realistic, and, and I just prefer that on a uh, on a personal level. Lore-wise, they have a new armor called Thunderstrike armor, which basically makes it easier for them to get reforged. And for those of you that don't know the lore, basically the Stormcast die and then get reforged by Sigma, but a part of their soul is lost in the process. And with some of the newer developments in the recent Age of Sigma books and lore, that I won't spoil for you, but essentially that process has become a lot more dangerous and unreliable. So these guys are Sigmar's attempts to get round those issues and keep the armies of the Stormcast going as efficiently as he possibly can. We also got to see a huge chunky new boy in the Stormcast Annihilator, which I have to say I'm kind of iffy on. I get the look they were going for is this huge immovable hard as nails unit, like he's got a two up save, which is fantastic in Age of Sigmar. It just doesn't quite hit the nail on the head for me. He looks a bit too thick, you know? The proportions aren't quite as nice and clean as, say, the Vindictors, which we just saw previously. Either way, though, he sounds like he is going to be incredibly beefy on the tabletop, and I do love the hammer and shield that he's wielding, so he has that going for him, I suppose. I'm just not as keen on him as I am with the, the Vindictors that they showed off as well. So whilst this reveal is, in my opinion, absolutely fantastic and one I'm really, really excited about, there are a few not outright bad things, but maybe we should call them uglies. Ugly things to get out there. First up, once again, as you would expect, it's Stormcast Eternals, more Stormcast Eternals, and I know, I know, they are essentially the Space Marines of Age of Sigmar, so they will always be in the starter boxes, they are the poster boys, but in my opinion, I also think that they don't have to be. I genuinely believe, and I have no numbers to back this up, uh, it is, is literally just a hunch, but based on what I've seen in tournaments, or casual games, or online, unlike 40k, the spread of players and armies is much, much wider. I know loads of people that play Death or Oryx or Sylvaneth or whoever it may be and have never even touched a Stormcast model, whereas almost everyone in 40k has a Marine army, even if it isn't their main one. So I could honestly see a starter box with, say, Soul Blight going up against Sylvaneth or Oryx going up against the Fire Slayers as still selling really, really well, even though it doesn't have the poster boy army in it. And again, I may be wrong, and if anyone has numbers about sales figures, please do let me know. I would love to be, you know, corrected if I am wrong. I just think it's a bit of an ugly to yet again have even more Stormcast models when there are some factions that could do with a, uh, a new set of models instead. And speaking of that, the second ugly I want to talk about is it's obviously a new edition. There's a new rulebook. So they wouldn't announce a new edition unless they were doing a starter set for it which, to be honest, is probably already kind of printed and packaged by now. So why not show off who the enemy force is? We did get a sneaky little preview teaser at the end of the show, which was very cool, and I initially thought it leant towards Skaven as the main enemy, but now I'm not so sure. There was a cheeky little teasing tweet from Eddie about the symbols on the base of Indrasta, uh, which makes me think that between that and also the mention of the, the bogs and the marshes and the mires, we might be seeing Lizardmen or Seraphon getting a huge update and being the other side of the starter set. I've also seen people talking about the Fimir, which are a very old Warhammer fantasy race that I don't even know, I think they maybe had like one or two models, but you can see them on the screen now, but they tended to live in sort of bogs and, and, and that kind of thing. So maybe they're going to be a brand new faction for Age of Sigmar and be opposing the Stormcast. But I just think, why not show us? Of all the places to show off a brand new set of miniatures, even just a tease of them, you'd think that Warhammer Fest would be where they'd want to do it. I mean, it's not like the reveal yesterday was hugely overwhelming, 
in terms of miniature reveals. The main thing was them actually announcing third edition itself. So they could have very easily, I think, shown off the third edition reveal and then teased us with the new starter box and both starter factions. Again, it's a bit of a minor thing, but I do think it's a definite oversight not to build even more hype up for the release by showcasing not just the Stormcast, but whatever enemy force there's going to be in the box as well. It would be like them announcing 9th edition and just showing off the new Primaris, but not telling us it was the Necrons who were the other half of the box. It just seems very bizarre to me and I think led to not a lot, but a little bit of unhappiness in the chat and, and sort of on Twitter afterwards where people were like, you've just shown us more Stormcasts. You know, you've, you've just shown us more Primaris Marines, basically. We want to see the other factions and see what else we can look forward to in terms of the uh, the the, the non-Primaris, the non-Stormcast side of things as well. But overall, I was extremely happy to see them announce Age of Sigmar 3rd Edition and my two little uglies are, as I said, they're both minor things. I just think that if I had been running it, I would have been doing things a little bit differently in terms of building hype for not just the Stormcast, but for whatever enemy faction there is as well. One final thing I will mention is that the Warhammer community article afterwards does note that there's a brand new narrative play system that lets you forge your own Legends of Conquest, which sounds to me mighty like the Crusade system of 40k, and I for one am incredibly hyped to see how they handle that. I think I've said before in previous videos, Crusade is my absolute favourite way to play 40k at the moment, so the idea of being able to build a growing force for a long narrative campaign in Age of Sigma as well is genuinely something I cannot wait to do. But that is it for today and also for Warhammer Fest overall. What did you make of the Age of Sigma 3rd edition reveal as well as all the other reveals over the course of the week? Did you have a favourite and if so do let me know in the comments below. As always thank you very much for watching, please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me but until next time I will catch you later guys.